All right, we're back again with another 3D printed speaker. This time I did the speaker and the box all in one video. It helped with the testing as we'll see later on, but we'll jump right into the build, keep this intro short. So yeah, on to the build.
Today's sponsor is PCBWay, a premier provider of custom prototype services for businesses, startups, and entrepreneurs. PCBWay offers a comprehensive range of services including CNC, 3D printing, and flexible and rigid PCB manufacturing. As a new user, you have the exclusive opportunity to receive $5 off your initial order. You can get single or dual layer PCBs with dimensions of up to 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters and a quantity of up to 10 for as little as $0 with only shipping and handling charges on your first purchase. As someone who has personally used PCB Way for my own projects, I can confidently attest to their exceptional quality and outstanding customer service. If you are in search of a reliable prototyping service, look no further than PCBWay.com. Okay, the design of this speaker was to test out different motor designs and see which way I should go moving forward. I tested three different designs, one being a bunch of little rectangular magnets arranged on the outside and inside of the voice coil. Another method was three larger, very strong neodymium magnets arranged around the voice coil. And the third way, which was the best way for this speaker, was very strong neodymium magnets aligned outside and inside the voice coil. I also tried to make this speaker as light as possible this time. I really tried to consider the weight that I was putting into these. I really reduced the weight by making the surround extra thin. The surround is only 0.8 millimeters thin compared to the typical 1.2 millimeters thin. The cone is now 0.4 millimeters thick. The uh, spider was only 0.8 millimeters thick as well for the flexible portion. It's now made out of PETG instead of TPU. So I really, really, really tried to cut down on the moving mass to hopefully increase the sensitivity of the speaker. But yeah, that's about all the changes that I made to the speaker for this build. Um, I did build a box to test with the speaker to kind of test the output in the box with REW with the different uh, magnet bodies on it. And we'll get into that after this. So yeah, we'll jump into some data, uh, look at some graphs, kind of see which ones performed, how they performed, um, and then we'll get into some play tests and yeah, we'll finish back up here. Okay, so here we are in REW. These are the results of the four different motor testings. The red is the uh, PLA based with the small rectangular magnets. The green is the metal, the protopasta iron PLA with the small metal magnets. So we can actually look at the difference between the plastic and the metal and it honestly doesn't make too much difference whether you have plastic or metal magnet bodies. They are very similar. They just kind of swap back and forth. Moving on to the large three magnet array, we can see it's decently flat, but it doesn't perform very well. And then moving on to the big neodymium magnets, this is the best performing speaker, and it's the one I've been using as a full range like desktop speaker for the last week and a half. So if you're going to build this project, I suggest going with the neodymium magnet design, the 
one with the outside of circle magnets and the inside square magnets, as the other speaker designs in this are not the greatest. So here it is again with them all compared. You can see how that neodymium magnet really just stands out above these other weaker magnets. I believe they're all neo magnets, but the um, orange line here represents an N52 magnet, and these all others represent, I think, like N30-ish range magnets, so, yeah. Okay, now we're looking at the parameters that I pulled using the DAT system version 3. These are the TS parameters that I pulled. The first one up is the small rectangular magnets. I couldn't actually get the VAS to work right. It kept telling me to add mass, and I added as much mass as I could, so the VAS is not correct. But all of the other things that are not VAS related should be there. That should be the RE, the FS, the QTS, the QMS, and the LE, along with the RT, should all be correct. Moving on, the three magnet speaker also did not want to cooperate in polling the entirety of the TS parameters, so I do only have the RE, FS, QTS, QMS, LE, and the RT for it. And last up, I do have all of the parameters polled for the large neodymium magnet, and it has all of the RE, FS, QTS, QMS, LE, MMS, and the VAS polled along with the RT. Comparing these though, you can see how the different magnet arrays actually play effect on the different systems inside. They change the FS drastically. As we can see, the smaller magnets was putting the FS around 481 hertz, and then the stronger magnet system was putting it clear down around 111. I'm assuming that is because it had more energy, and the lower hertz take more energy to actually produce. So that would be my assumption on that. So that's all I have for the TS parameters that I use to build the box with. Okay, we've seen the graphs on this. I personally think that the larger neodymium arrangement of magnets performed the best. It definitely sounded the best. It's the most full sounding. I've tried this speaker now for about a week as a desktop speaker again. It's not as bassy as version 9 was in its box, but version 9 also had an FS that was about 30 hertz lower than this, so I feel that's to be expected that this will not be as prominent into the bass area of music. But moving forward, I don't think that I'll be able to stick with a purely 3D printed magnet body. I feel I need to move to metal plates inside of the magnet body to help form and control the magnetic field around the coil. And after speaking with Paul from Polymate 3D, which I do recommend checking out his channel, um, he's got some really cool projects out. You, some of them are open source for free to download and try, so do check that out. But after talking with him, as he's building speakers as well, that's kind of what I've came to the conclusion of, is that I need to move away from a completely plastic magnet holder and move to one with metal plates. So version 11 will be the first speaker that incorporates magnetic plates on the inside of the voice coil kind of as a traditional speaker would. So I'm moving away from the 100% printed design, but I feel I'm kind of at the edge of what's really possible with purely 3D printed parts. So yeah, that'll probably come out hopefully next month, so be on the lookout for that. Um, again, check out PCB Away if you want to print any of these. They offer 3D printing services, they offer the laser cutting services that you can uh, get the back plates cut for the box. Um, so yeah, if you want to build this yourself and you don't have access to 3D printers and laser cutters, PCBWay can definitely print everything here. They can print the TPU, the PETG, um, they can do the polycarbonate backings. So yeah, check them out. Um, if you made it this far, like, subscribe, helps the channel grow. But yeah, thanks for watching guys.